Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.6 beta one has been out to developers and public beta testers for about a week and iOS 16.5 has been out for the same amount of time about. We'll take a look at the overall experience that I've been having using iOS 16.6 on my iPhone 14 pro max and iPad pro. We'll also talk about iOS 16.5, not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll. We're at the time of this video, there's over 8,600 votes and over 122 comments. I've taken all of that information to determine how the experience is for everyone and hopefully build an accurate picture of what it's like. Also, we'll talk about bugs, battery life, some Apple news, and also a little bit about iOS 17. Now, as far as Apple news, Apple is actually shutting down the My Photo Stream feature that was launched when iCloud was first made available. It's long been replaced with Apple's iCloud photo library, and Apple will actually turn this off July 26th, 2023. So if you're using the My cloud or my photo stream in iCloud feature that will no longer be available after that. An iCloud photo library is much better anyway, and you don't have to purchase separate storage for it or anything like that. Now, something that was released this past week that initially I was quite excited about was Final Cut Pro for iPad and also Logic Pro. I'm less familiar with that, but I've been using Final Cut Pro. I did a separate video about this. So if you want to see more in depth review of this, I have a separate video on editing two full videos on this. And as you can see, this is my iOS 16.5 video. I fully recreated on this device and it works pretty good, but it's still lacking a few things to make it worth that $5 per month for me since I already use it on the Mac and it works much faster for me and has third party plugin support. That's eventually coming to this, but this is very much a 1.0 version, but I'm very excited that it's still available or currently available. And I never thought it'd be this early if ever that Apple would release it. So let me know if you've been using final cut, what you think of it on iPad or logic pro as well. Now, Apple updated the developer app this past week as well with WWDC 2023 details. So if you tap the center button here in the app, you'll see swiftly developing and it gives all of the information about Apple's upcoming keynote, which is the thing most people will want to watch where they announce iOS 17 and all sorts of other updates. That's on June 5th at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. The State of the Union is after that. There's Apple Design Awards, different sessions, labs, activities, and then there's a forum and then be on WWDC. There's also some new stickers to go along with this. So if we go into messages and within messages under stickers, find the developer stickers and you can see the new ones here. So we have an iPod with a scroll wheel here, as well as different smiley faces, WWDC 23, the original Mac and more. So lots of different stickers that are available. Now you can use them across iOS if you want to do that. Now, as far as app updates, there's a few things to talk about. The chat GPT app is now available and originally it was only available in the United States and possibly some other countries. It's now available in over 40 countries. It took a little bit, but there's quite a few countries that are included now. Everything from Morocco to Slovenia, Tunisia, the UAE, UK, Lithuania, and much more. So a lot of different places can try this out. Now you will need to sign up for it, but definitely check it out if you haven't already. Now, if you're someone that uses WhatsApp to text different people, as many people do outside the United States, WhatsApp may start allowing you to use your username to chat with someone on the app instead of sharing your personal phone number. I think that's a great thing to offer as not everyone wants to share their personal phone number, but may want to talk to someone. So I think that's a great feature. Hopefully it's coming very soon. Now ivory, which is a great Mastodon app, as you can see here, for some reason, the icon's not showing properly, but if we go into it, you can see my profile here. And if we go back out, the icon works and then sort of disappears. So that's a little bit of a bug, but this is a great app and it's now available for Mac outside of beta testing. So if you're using Mastodon, I would highly recommend ivory as it seems to work really well, other than that little bug I'm having there. Now, if you're using Netflix, Netflix is something a lot of people use and share their passwords with, and I guess I don't have it installed. I have it on my iPad, but if you're actually using that, Netflix is starting to really crack down on people sharing passwords. So if you're using Netflix across maybe family members that don't live with you, they're starting to crack down on that and not allowing people to share those different passwords. They'll actually encourage you to buy another plan to allow you to either share it or have your own plan. So I'm curious if any of you have actually experience that it seems to be taking place in the United States and the UK right now. So if you're having that issue where it's actually telling you that I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. 
If you use the United Airlines app, it's being updated to allow for use of the Dynamic Island. You can see this announced on Mac Rumors, where it's going to have Dynamic Island flight tracking along with live activities on the lock screen. I can't wait to see more apps support this. It's super helpful with different apps like Flighty, where you can just see it in real time as maybe you're waiting for someone to arrive, or it works well with things like Uber and, and other apps as well. So that's something I would love to see utilized more as iPhone 15, all of them are said to actually have that. And speaking of iPhone 15, I have some of the models here that I showed in a separate video. They indeed have the overall design of them. They don't look too different here, but there's definitely a curved edge that's nicer. Some updated volume buttons on the Pro models room for USB-C now on the bottom with a larger opening and hopefully some more changes with the cameras and more. I have a full video on this. If you want to check it out, I'll link it in the description, but be sure to check that out. It definitely feels nicer when hanging onto it as these curved edges going to flat help for grip, but it's definitely nice to hold. So hopefully we'll see more features than that by the time it releases, but these are just sort of models that go out to case manufacturers to sort of get the overall feel and dimensions of where things are placed with buttons and more. And you can see, here it looks like we are going to have an activity button instead of maybe a volume or silent switch you'll see here just like we do on the apple watch ultra we'll have that as well so that's something i definitely welcome let me know what you think of the design in the comments below now at wwdc 2023 this year apple is expected to announce its mixed reality headset however the actual production numbers are said to be much lower than initially anticipated down to 100,000 units or less per year with it costing around three thousand dollars is what many people expect i don't expect them to sell millions but many people thought they'd make at least a million this year it looks like it's going to be much lower numbers than that i'm not sure that everyone will want to pick one up if it's really three thousand dollars and they're going to have to be very convincing as to what it can do better than say an oculus so we'll have to wait and see now, as far as iOS 16.5 and iOS 16.6, well, with iOS 16.5, some people have said that the new pride wallpaper is actually flickering when it's animating, or sometimes it's just very stuttery. So with that new animation, which I'm hoping they bring to a lot of other different wallpapers in the future, it seems to be very stuttery for some, not everyone, but it does seem to work okay here, but some people say it's flickering or stuttering in general. Also something else that seems to be there for both versions, even iOS 16.5, 16.6 is the stutter of the notification center. You'll see it's very glitchy. As I move, you'll see it's just kind of jumping around. That's there with 16.5 and 16.6. Also, some people are saying with 16.5, the phone is staying very hot while it's not doing anything at all. It's not charging. They don't have any apps open. They said it just gets warm unusually. And this actually happened with the first release candidate of iOS 16.5 and seems to be happening still for some people. Not everyone's reporting it, but some people are reporting that issue. Of course, there's still that issue with the lightning to USB three adapter. This is something that Apple overlooked where it's no longer working properly and will require an update to fix. So maybe we could see an iOS 16.5.1 before we see iOS 16.6 released to the public. The same is true with watch OS 9.5, where there's some bugs there that they need to fix and they may need a watch OS 9.5.1. So Apple could release those sooner rather than later. And Apple recently stopped signing iOS 16.4.1 and iOS 15.7.5. That means you can no longer downgrade to those versions. So if you're on 16.5 or newer, you can no longer downgrade to 16.4.1. Sometimes they do that. And usually within a few weeks, we'll see the next release. It may or may not be coincidental, but either way, that's usually what happens. Now, as far as iOS 16.6 beta 2's release, I would expect it this coming week, the week ahead of WWDC. So hopefully on Tuesday or Wednesday, we'll have a release of beta 2. And then of course, we'll have iOS 17 beta 1 on June 5th, typically if Apple does what it normally does. So we'll have concurrent betas for quite some time, all the way until September, where we'll have the final release of iOS 17. Then iOS 16 will be done other than for security updates or bug fixes. So at this point, I'm looking forward, of course, to iOS 17, which is just about a week and a half or less away. Now, as far as iOS 16.6 beta one's experience so far, it's very stable. I've had zero crashes. It's been super smooth and fast, whether that's performance or just promotion in general, and it's been incredibly stable. In fact, most comments say that, which is a great sign. However, there are still those issues, like I mentioned before, with the notifications and also medications that I've mentioned before in health. If we go to browse, medications, 
and tap on logs, it will crash. Again, I've submitted that in the feedback app. Make sure you do the same thing if you have it and you have some issues. As far as camera improvements, we haven't seen anything so far. I've seen no difference in processing. I've been using it and it looks fine, but then sometimes it processes odd. When you're in raw, it does seem to help a little bit, but not always. Sometimes it's over processed. If you're taking a photo, maybe in dimmer light or maybe in a scenario where it's just not as bright. Now, as far as iOS 17, I would expect that to fix a bunch of issues, including problems with the notification center as it looks like they may redesign that some. So I'm looking forward to that. Apple probably will fix some different issues, but also with new features, we're hearing a few different new things. I covered them more in depth in a separate video, but one in particular I wanted to share is that the lock screen could be getting sort of a home hub type of update when you're not using it when it's maybe charging you could have an, a home hub landscape mode with different widgets maybe some notifications controls for your home and more so this is just a concept i made just to see what it could look like and maybe we'll get something like this or much better than this hopefully where they give us more information and customization and you may have just seen it stuttered there a little bit as i swiped home so i haven't seen that yet even though performance has been pretty good as far as the overall battery if we go into settings Let's go down to battery, battery health and charging. This phone is at 96%. It's performing worse than any phone I've had in recent memory. Typically I'll be at hundred percent all the way to September and I charge it the same way. You can see here, there's 191 cycles to the battery. It's not really out of the norm for me. And Apple says 80% after two years is normal. This will be down to 90% for sure by September with its current depletion. So I'm not too concerned about it. You can of course fix that with replacing the battery, but it's definitely not doing as well as it had in the past. Now, if we go back and take a look at battery, Yesterday, I used 75% of my battery and only had one hour and 58 minutes of screen active time. That's pretty poor. And for some reason, mail was using a lot of background activity. The day before, I had two hours and 19 minutes. And again, 75% of my battery. It seems to be getting worse and worse for me. It was getting better, but other people are experiencing something different. Abhishek sent in his battery. This is an iPhone 11 Pro Max with 95% battery health. You'll see after using about 50% of his battery, Battery, he had three hours and 59 minutes of screen on time compared to iOS 16.5, which he sent before he's actually getting about a half hour more with the same amount of usage. So it's actually improving for him. For some reason, my battery life has just been terrible in general on my iPad. You can see if we go into settings and then we go down to battery, Here's the overall battery health here on the left. And as you can see, I haven't used it a ton, but I had an hour and 20 minutes of screen on time. Then today, an hour and 10 minutes, the day before an hour. And the last time I charged it was a few days ago. So it's actually getting me about six hours, seven hours of screen on time. It's doing quite well with iPad OS 16.6 beta one. So no issues there. It just seems to be with my iPhone. As far as performance, like I said, it was good. No issues there. And and I haven't had any heat issues on iOS 16.6 at all. It's super cool to the touch, no issues there. And if we look at the thermal camera in the hottest portion of the phone, it's cooling down quite a bit, but over the processor, it's about 32.1 degrees Celsius. And at the hottest point I can find, we're at about 86.3 degrees. So it's staying nice and cool, no issues there. And some people do have that issue on iOS 16.5, but I'm hearing it much less on iOS 16.6. As far as what you had to say about the overall experience, let's take a look at some of the comments. Random guy JP five MQ said I'm using iPhone 11 on iOS 16.6 beta one. It has some bugs. For example, you have to click twice on an app to open it only sometimes. And the battery is better. Not as much as it was from 16.4 to 16.5, but it's better iOS 16.6 beta one on an iPhone SE 2020, the battery definitely improved and it's been a whole lot smoother. No noticeable difference with the phone's temperature. I have yet to encounter any bugs so far. It's been great. I can't lie. 16.6 beta is more stable than any previous version. Like you mentioned, apps open quickly and overall is buttery smooth. Jeremy DeBose said iOS 16.6 beta one on iPhone 14 pro max has been smooth. Battery is still good. I'm at 63% after using it all day since 6 30 a.m. and it's almost 10 p.m. no lag freezes reboots or weird glitches 
So that's everything with iOS 16.5 and 16.6 beta one. Hopefully we'll have an iOS 16.5.1 to address some of those issues until iOS 16.6 is ready. I think most people probably care about iOS 17 the most, but either way, those fixes would be welcome. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, it will be linked in the description as it always is. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.